Let me share with you a scripture before I do that. The scripture is taken in Exodus chapter 18. <coughs> and basically, chap- verse 21. And here, the, the, key, the key concept that I want to establish in r- this whole restructuring exercise is not just for organizational purpose, because it is never, it is never and it should never be done just as an organizational tool. I believe as God implements it right round from the time of Moses until now, structures are meant to assist the establishment of the church. And structures are meant to support the growth of the people. And so that's the whole concept behind structures. So when we do structuring and restructuring and realignment of different leaders, it is for the welfare of the church. And, uh, and so in verse 21, it says, but s- select capable men from all the people. And I think this is a very key phrase. So I entitled my message this morning, Select Capable Men. And uh, capable is a very big word, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, we need to understand what this capacity is for every one of us. And uh, looking at the first area, I think basically it's a very simple structure that the Lord gave us. Um, uh, in charge of 1,000 people, in charge of hundreds, in charge of fifties, in charge of tens. You know, and I think every one of us have different capacity as well. Some can take care of 1,000 very easily and they can still sleep. Some people can run big companies uh, and borrow billions of dollars and they can still sleep. Some of us take a small car loan and we cannot sleep. You know, because uh, we are afraid, that we don't know whether we can pay the mortgage. So different ones of us have different capacities. And God gives us different capacities. And we need to realize that uh, uh, we, we need to fit in to wherever it is. You know? So uh, when you are appointed to take care of 10, do it gladly. If you are appointed and you, you grow, grow up, they said, Pastor, why you got a magic number? You, know, you said all life groups must be from 2 to 50. That's where I got it from. Okay? Uh, it stands, okay, and as stands grow, maximum 50. Okay, after 50, you fall under another category, which is called church planter. Okay, so if you hit 50, uh, you will receive a call from me. <laughs> Very nice call, because I'll be the happiest man in the world. And I think God is even happier than me. Okay, because you have done well. And, uh, and I think this is how we ought to structure the church. And so all of us are in charge of tens. Uh, and these life group leaders are actually people who take care of tens. But they can grow up to 50. And when you fall under 50 and hundreds, then I, 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 I think you are a little bit special in that sense. And so when you read the scriptures, it says, but select capable men. I added women there. Uh, so I put in brackets. Okay, I didn't want to... Uh, <laughs> when, when, you know, scripture is very unique. You know, and uh, when, you know the five feeding of the 5,000, they said they fed 5,000 men. I uh, don't know how many women there are. Maybe another 5,000 women. And then another 5,000 children. So when they say 5,000 men, means 15,000 people. <laughs> okay? That's, that's what roughly it is. And so he says, select capable men. But I, I believe there are many capable women as well uh, who are uh, nowadays uh, run big organizations. They even run countries. Okay? And they are very capable. And uh, I, I believe uh, this is what God has given us. From all the people, okay, uh, and this is a very simple structure. So I have a very, uh, I have a basically a two-layer structure. One I call life leaders. That's the twenty-five of them, and then I call another the li- the the level that is uh, over them. I call them life coach. They are not the bosses, okay. They are the coach. They are people who will help, encourage, and lead, and direct, and. Uh, 
and, uh, and motivate and uh, equip the life leaders. Okay, so I have a group of life coach. The life coach, I will deal with them November 19th. Okay, so you come November 19th and I will talk about them. But uh, one month's time. Okay, but today is Life Leaders Day. And, and this is, these are the people I'm selecting. Uh, so that is a very simple structure. A life coach, life leaders. And they spread over everyone in the church. The whole church comes under this structure. If you are out of it, then you lose out on the shepherding and the pastoral care, etc. And also uh, the leadership and the mentoring. Uh, so please come under. So I would expect all of you to sign up today. Okay, and they are, I'm uh, fixing up the posters now in the lobby. So you don't have to peep, it will come out soon. Uh, <laughs> somebody is fixing it up. And, uh, and it will be a display of all our life leaders that you can choose from. Okay, and uh, uh, the whole church come under and everyone, if, if you are from 0 to 100 years old, you can sign up. Okay, if you are above 100, we will come and visit you. Okay, and we will bring communion to your house. I, uh, I, I, we, need to, <laughs> we need to try and uh, 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 manage everyone. And so the groups are, I, I believe, quite manageable. So two people in a group, minimum. So if you have a husband and wife and nobody pick you, you can still start. You're two people. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So let's do it. Let's, let's not talk about uh, how big our groups are because it's not important. The numbers, let me stress, the numbers are not important. It's the heart that I, I desire. It's the heart of willingness to disciple somebody. And you say, Lord, I am ready. And I think that's all that I need. So these 25 people are very, very special people because they are going to be the extension of the leadership that we have. So uh, whatever I say, they will uh, teach you. Whatever I teach, they will continue. Uh, there is an extension of care. So if, they, if the leaders come to your house or they, they conduct a meeting, they are the extension of our leadership to you because we are not able you you saw the scriptures that we read about as well and the second point is they are all fat leaders okay i've selected all fat ones um, the women are also in brackets okay because i don't think they like that <laughs> uh, they like that adjective uh, but the men don't mind because especially chinese men fat means prosperous isn't it? same equal <laughs> I see Ronnie knocking his, nodding his head. He's so slim, but he's, he's nodding his head. I think he's getting there. Uh, and the three, three descriptions are, are taken from the same scripture in Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. It says, Select capable men from all the people, men who fear God. The first area must fear God. You must be a person who reverence and honour the Lord. If you do not have that in your life, I will not pick you. I think it's the highest criteria that I hold in my leadership team because I, I sense that this is a very important area. And so these 25 I have gone through, I prayerfully gone through, I prayed over the time, the moment I asked you to write your calling in July, the first week of July, I've received all that uh, emails and I've, I've gone through that and I have picked people that I feel uh, have, have at least demonstrated elements of this. First area is fear God. The second, they are able, uh, capable, same word, able, capable, uh, same word. The first area is spirituality, the same, second area is skill capability available to administer these groups okay uh, and the third area the scripture talks about is uh, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain 
I like it. Very, nowadays, very hard to find trustworthy men. Uh, if you're looking for a husband, <laughs> I don't know how many of you are, <laughs> but this is, the, this is the criteria you should look for. Trustworthy men. Just as God looks for them, it gives us a standard to look for good husbands. And uh, at the same time, <laughs> trustworthy women, since they want to be at Parma, uh, so we also give them the same criteria. If they say, oh, okay, la, we, 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 uh, we, we don't need to be at Pa, then okay, then the criteria changes. You know, but since you want at Pa, then I put you at a Pa level. Uh, both must be trustworthy. That's the way. We ought to hold ourselves as people who are trustworthy. Small, small things, very important. Taking stationery away from your office and using it at your home. Simple things. I hit the nail on the head. These are things your boss bought for you to use in the office. Unless you work from home. Okay? Uh, then you bring back and you take it back. I think these are very important small things that we talk about trustworthiness. We're not talking about the big, no need to talk about the big things. The big things are, of course, uh, 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 much, much bigger. Uh, uh, robbing a bank and all that. But uh, I think not many of us qualify uh, with such uh, great skills to do that. You know, it takes a lot to do that. But it take, doesn't take much uh, to, uh, to, to do simple things that when people look at us, they say, oh, you know, this is the type of leader that is leading me. And we want to be trustworthy in everything that we do. Ken? Third area. And the third area is supportive members. You see, as Jethro and Moses put together a structure, everyone aligned themselves. So my call to you today, if you want to be supportive members before you leave, please sign up, okay? All the screens will be on the, on the uh, board. And please sign up. If you want to pray about it, by all means. I have given you two weeks to do it. This Sunday and next Sunday, and uh, seven days in between. So you have eight days to nominate your group. I think eight days is enough. Uh, even, if you, even if you are a very slow decision maker, and you need to discuss with your spouse, <laughs> please do prayerfully and pick one. Okay? And so be a supportive member because I encourage everyone to belong to a group. And especially leaders, if you are leading on stage, if you are teaching, and if you are uh, leading in some ministry, you must be in. Okay? No, not, no, no options. Uh, it is essential. But if you are a member, you are encouraged. There are two different words. One is encourage, one is essential. Okay? And uh, I, I don't want to use the word mandatory. I, I think mandatories are used only by dictators. And I don't want to be a dictator, okay? Essential. I think that's the right word to use. Because I, I believe we must be in it. You know, there are many advisors that we can have. Oh, I like to advise people. I like to, I like to tell them my opinion and all that. Sure. But I only accept advisors if you are part of the system. If you are outside, I call you a critic. Right? That's the difference between an advisor and a critic. An advisor is somebody inside, participating in the growth, feeling the pressure of it and want it to do better. And we are inside. And those are advisors. But those from outside are actually critics. It's very easy. Words are free. Very easy to criticize. And let's not do it. Let's be people inside the system, part of the leadership, part of the church. And let's, when we share, it's because we love the church. Ken? Wow, everyone look so angry at me. <laughs> no, uh, supposed to be a light, la, anyway. So enjoy yourself, okay? Mm -hmm.